Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel if you are new. Hello, my name is V. I post nail tutorials every Thursday and Sunday at 8.15 a.m. Central Time. If you guys are OGs to my channel, you will note that this is not my background and I did not post on Thursday. I had all of the intentions to post on Thursday. However, this happened. I have never lived through something more terrifying in my entire life. Everything was shaking. You can hear stuff being knocked around. We've been in Florida for five years now, so this is definitely the first time that I have ever had to even deal with this kind of stuff. We're out of power. We were out of water. Obviously no internet. I was able to still have a little bit of service So I was keeping in touch with my close ones So I'm happy that we are able to be finishing this video uploading it and finally getting it out to you guys I'm doing a very simple fall set. I am focusing a lot on the accent now, which is the leaves and all that I hope you guys enjoy it. Thank you guys so much for waiting on me now. Let's get right into the video Getting right into today's video, I am starting off with my hand pre-prepped. I did apply the Universal Tips from Not Polish onto my practice hand. Now I'm just going in with my e-file and lightly blending that tip to the natural nail. I do think this helps with an easier application. So if you guys are struggling building that up, I do suggest you guys blend this. You get a more even coat of that acrylic. So now I'm just taking my Tammy Taylor Peel and Stick file and filing the sides, making sure that the sides are flush to the sidewalls of the natural nail. You don't want the tip to be too big on to that natural nail or that can cause lifting. I'm just making sure that it is the perfect size and then I'm just squaring those tips off. Now I'm going ahead and applying Green Envy from Not Polish onto the pinky nail. And I'm just going to fully cover that nail. It is such a really pretty fall color. Highly recommend if you guys are looking for that perfect green. Now I'm just applying one bead of acrylic into that middle section, blending it out towards the tip. And then I am doing a second bead on the tip area and blending it up towards that first bead. Because these nails are long, I am doing four beads of acrylic and the third bead goes right in between that middle section and the cuticle area and then I blend it out towards the tip and then I am applying the fourth bead in the cuticle area. I place it right below the cuticle and then I just gently push up and around and then I blend it down into the middle section. Now, if you do want to build a higher apex, you can add another bead in that middle section. But for the purpose of this video, and because it is a practice hand, I'm going to be doing these nails very thin. Now for the ring finger, I'm taking Touch of Lips from Not Polish and applying that again onto the entire nail. One bead goes in the middle section and then I'm going to be building out the rest on that tip. I am using my Not Polish brush in the number 12. I do really like it so far. The size difference from the ones that I've used before isn't dramatic, so I do appreciate that. And then along with that, I'm using my Profiles Backstage Monomer. It is a very low odor monomer. If you guys are interested in checking it out, I do suggest it. If you guys can see that little bit of nude on the paper towel, that is the exact same nude that I am placing onto the nail. But however, because I did swatch it against a white napkin, it does change dramatically when you place it on the actual nail. A lot of things will affect it. For example, the skin tone of your client or yourself will affect the color. And then the colors that are next to it or you are combining it with will change it dramatically as well. 
so i did want you guys to kind of just think about that next time you are recommending a color to your client um, always try to place it on their nail just to kind of see how it's going to look and then choose whether you guys like it or not for my middle finger i'm using this yellow mustard color it's like a mustard yellow but orange i guess hopefully you guys still like this color i did really like the turnout of it but i was going for more of a yellow this one is called autumn leaf On the index finger I am placing fall for bronze and it is like a rusty copper color I freaking love this it has a really nice shimmer to it which I also really really love and I'm just placing that on the entire nail as well Now I'm going to be encapsulating with clear from not polish and I am just adding a thin layer of that over the entire surface of the nail. I am using this to build up that extra thickness that I need especially for long nails and on a client I would typically use this as well to build up that apex. I like to be cheap and save money on products so this is kind of one of those things that I picked up. I know for a fact that clear powder is inexpensive compared to colored powder so in order to save more of that colored powder i use very thin layers of that and then i add the thickness with my clear so just a little thought if you guys are just like me and like to save some money
once that acrylic is nice and dry, I am going in with my Kiara Sky rechargeable e-file. And I do have her at about 8,000 RPMs. And along with that, I'm using the 5-in-1 carbide bit. This is in fine grit. I'm just going in and lightly filing the surface of the nail, making sure that the acrylic is nice and smooth. First going around the cuticle area and then filing on the rest of the nail. I do this very, very lightly. You don't need a lot of pressure. If you are applying your acrylic as smooth as possible, you shouldn't have to do too much filing. Once I'm done with that, I am using my Tommy Taylor peel and stick file and filing the sides of the nail. I want to make sure that my shape is nice and crisp, so do not skip this step. Even though we did already file at the beginning, you still want to make sure you file at the end because that acrylic can add extra bulkness that we do not want. just to be extra safe i am going over the entire surface of the nail with my hand file as sometimes the e-file can leave a little bit of ridges i want to make sure that it is completely smooth that's basically what i'm doing here and i'm going to be repeating that on the rest of the nails as well I'm going in and lightly buffing the surface of the nail using my sponge buffer from Profiles Backstage. And I just want to make sure everything is super, super smooth in preparation for any nail art or my top coat.
Now I am top coating the ring finger because I'm going to be doing nail art over top of it, especially because I am going to be basically covering the entire nail. I wanna make sure that the base is as smooth as possible. So I am pre-top coating this nail, placing it in the light for at least one minute, making sure it's nice and matte. And then I'm gonna go in with my 3D nail art. Now I'm going to be starting off my little leaf design and for this step I am using my 3D nail art brush that I purchased off of Amazon about four years ago and she's still going strong. She should be linked in my Amazon storefront so check it out if you guys are interested. I'm starting off by doing a very very small bead of acrylic placing that on the nail and then bringing it into the point in the middle and then I'm lightly bringing out the sides as well. So basically what I'm doing is one leaf with three little points, one in the middle, two on the sides, and the ones on the sides are a lot smaller than the one in the middle. I'm just trying to define those as much as possible. I'm just using monomer with this and I'm using the same colors that I used on the nails themselves. I wanted them to match perfectly so I'm using that yellowish orange and the rustic-y red. Again, now I'm placing the other leaf on one side of the nail and I'm going to be doing the exact same little design. I want it to be connected in the center so I'm kind of flattening it out making sure that it is kind of flawlessly connected as you do want it to be like a maple leaf look. And then I'm going to be repeating that on the other side. And I am taking the point of my brush and really pressing in those details that I want to really be noticeable. So once it's drying, you can mold it a lot easier. When it's wet, it takes a little bit longer and I feel like you can really get the detail once it starts drying. So I like to press it in um, right before it fully dries. Now I'm going in and just doing a tiny little stem I am using that rustic color to do this step and then I'm kind of just blending it into those little creases to give the illusion of a dried up stem. I am dipping my brush into the yellowish orange and then immediately after into that rustic red color. So that's how you get two-toned anything. If you want to do flowers, uh, leaves, petals, whatever you want to do, all that's all you need to do. Dip it in one color first and then in the darker color afterwards. So I did one tiny little side of the leaf and then I'm going to be doing the other side. Like I said, I'm just making sure that I'm pressing in those details that I really want to show. And they don't have to be perfect. Leaves are not perfect. I kind of just try to do my best and hope for the best. So I think I've mentioned this before, but a lot of the time when I'm trying to create videos for you guys, I kind of just go with it. For example, I had the intention of only doing maple leaves for this design, but then I realized that in that little section, I didn't have enough space to do another maple leaf. So I went ahead and tried adding that green envy into that area and kind of just go with it. And so I started building out a, just a tiny little leaf and then with the tip of my brush, I started pressing in the little texture that I wanted on the leaf. And I felt like it brought it all together since I am using the color that I used on the pinky. And then I did decide to add another one on the other side. And then any other areas I'm going to be trying to fill in as well. I'm 
I'm gonna go ahead and let you guys watch as I finish off this accent now and I'll let you guys kind of learn from just watching. So I'm not quite sure if you guys can tell, but any areas that I did use monomer on, they kind of left like an oily look on that matte top coat. So I am soaking my 3D nail art brush in some swipe. You can even use alcohol. And then I'm just going over those areas and it helps clean it up and also kind of dry it out to give that matte look that we originally wanted and it doesn't damage the matte top coat at all. So just a quick little tip. Now I'm taking my matte top coat from Not Polish and I'm going to be top coating these nails. You can absolutely do shiny. For that, I do recommend gloss it from Not Polish. But for the purpose of taking flawless photos, I like to use matte. So I am applying that onto the surface of the nail. And you do want to cure that in the light for at least one minute. I like to do two just to be safe and make sure everything is nice and cured basically concludes today's video let me know what you guys think down below thank you guys so much for watching and being patient with me i hope you guys enjoyed it and i'll catch you guys next time